Hi, my name is Melinda, and in this video I'm going to show you how to break apart a photo alpha set the easy way in Digital Scrapbook Artist. Now I've been playing around with this for quite some time, and I finally came up with a completely different way of doing it, and it's really, really quick. So all you do is you click on your photograph, and I would like to thank Connie for emailing me this photograph, which I've just done a copy and paste from her email into a Digital Scrapbook Artist. What you want to do is you definitely want to remove the background, so I'm just going to select this, go to Cutout Studio at the top of the screen, and then just selecting you know, the appropriate brush size, I'm going to remove the background, and now I'm going to remove the insides of the letters, so we'll just go over here, the B, the D, the E, the G, the O, the P, and the Q. Once the insights have been removed, if you realize that you've got the dots on your I and the dots on your J and they don't have those little images around it, you know, that kind of look like running ants, then that just means that they're no longer part of the uh, set. They've uh, been erased. If you want to put them back in, you can go to the top of the screen and you click on this button right here. It's called the Keep Tool. And then you can just draw that right back in. But you know, honestly, I don't want the dots, so I'm just going to click on Undo. And I'm going to click on Preview just to double check that all the transparency show through and that my letters are, um, you know, without any background on them. Once that's done, I'm going to click on OK, and now it's on my screen. Now, one thing I want to do, because I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. The first way is the absolute easiest way. I'm just going to drag a copy over to the right hand side, and that was done by using the control key on my keyboard and holding down my left mouse button. Now this is the way that I came up with this, and I find this really fast. Make sure your image is selected now that you've got your background removed. Go to the top of the screen, click on File, then go to Export. Go to Export as Image, and when this new box opens up, make sure you've got a dot beside Selected Item. Selected Item just means the item that has these little boxes around it. That's the item that you've selected. You don't want to select the entire page because you might have other things. And Selected Items, I just find, is best. For this size here, you definitely want to have 300. And um, the format that you want to use is Windows HD Photo. Now, if you have suddenly uh, JPEG selected, just click here and go all the way down to Windows HD Photo. Leave everything the way that it is and just make sure that there is a check mark beside Transparency. Then click on Export. Once you've done that, you're going to need to name your file, so I'll just call it um, Alpha. And then I'm going to click on Save, but make sure you know where you've saved it to. I've got it saved to my pictures, so I'm going to click on Save. And now that that's saved, I can actually just delete it because I don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to go to the top of the screen. I'm going to click on Insert, then Photos, then From File, and then I just go back to my pictures, and then there it is. I'll click on it once, and I'll click on Open. And now you'll see this little tiny image of a box. If I click once on my blank page, the image appears. Now, all you need to do is, while this is selected, go to the bottom of the screen and click on Convert to Curves. And then over here, you're going to click on Break Apart. Click once off of your image. Now, if you wanted to, you could click on the insides of all of these letters. But a really neat thing is, if you just click on the top portion and you click on this handle, you can move it around with the inside. So just drag it into your letters section. Make sure letters is activated. And since this is the letter B, I'm just going to assign it the letter B and click on OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the letter N. I'm going to drag it over here, and I'm going to assign it lowercase n, click on OK. And let's do that with the letter A as well. Let's just move A over here and assign it a lowercase a and click on OK. Now, if I'm going to type out the word Anna, you can see A is up here and N is down here. When I type out the word Anna and I click on Insert, you're going to see that it's instantly aligned, so I don't have to worry about any kind of alignment. It doesn't matter where your letters are, they're all separate. You might notice, however, that when you start to click on these letters, you might just want to double check them all. If you come across a situation like this where your P and your Q are connected, you can just zoom in a little bit bigger so that you can get a better view of this. What you can do is you can just leave it selected, go to the top of the screen and click on the scissors, and then just sort of hold down your left mouse button and just go through here, let go, click on select, 
and now click once off of your image and now click back on your image and now you've broken apart those letters. So when you zoom out you can now take those letters, you can move them over into here individually and since that's the letter P I can assign it a small letter P if I can find it, there we go, and click on OK. Now. Um, the reason that I'm doing it this way with Windows HD Photo is because the quality is much better than if I do it this way. Let me show you. Let me just delete this and delete this. So this was my original image that I had removed from Cutout Studio, right? And I had made a copy that I dragged over here and in this copy I had converted that to Windows HD Photo. But let's just say I didn't do it to this. Let's say I finished with Cutout Studio and um, I did it a different way. But first let's drag a copy over here. Let's, sorry, let's drag a copy over here. So with this copy, what I'm going to do now is just leave it alone. This was not converted. This came directly from Cutout Studio. Now if I go over here and click on Convert to Curves, and go over here to break apart, what you're going to notice is yes, you can move all of these letters around individually, no problem whatsoever. However, the quality is not as good. And to give you an example, I'm just going to click on the P and the Q, and I'll move them over here. So this is the one directly from Cutout Studio. This is the one, what was the copy from Cutout Studio, and instantly, without converting it, I broke it apart. So now let's look at the difference. So what I want to do is go over to the magnifying glass and zoom in. And what you're going to see is if you just break it apart without converting it first to Windows HD, you're going to have a lot of pixels. So you see all these pixels over here? And this was the original file. Now if I click on Select, and if I just type out, let's just say, the letter P, okay, because that was the one that I had converted, click on Insert, you're going to see that this P that's been converted to Windows HD has a much better quality than the original and then the one that you just convert, you know, just by going down here. So that is my workaround. It's very, very fast. All of your letters are separate. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is lovemyzombie at yahoo.ca.